Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will go to the altar of God. Our help is in the name of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might be found worthy to participate in this holy sacrifice. And now, let us all make an examination of our conscience. Having made an examination of conscience, and asking our Heavenly Father for His forgiveness, I will offer today's Confidior. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again Revive us. And your people will rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. At the judgment, the men of Nivea will arise with this generation and condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and there is something greater than Jonah here. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away, and that the Lord may grant your time of refreshment. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father. Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, 
Your Son called us to reform our lives in your mercy. Lead us beyond sin and death and grant us the eternal life your Son has won for us. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. On this, the third Sunday in the Ordinary, we take the first reading from the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Set out for the great city of Nivea, and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nivea, according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nivea was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city, and had gone but a single day walking, announcing, Forty days more, and Nivea shall be destroyed. When the people of Nivea believed God, they proclaimed the fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw their, by their actions how they turned away from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual for today. Who is there like you, the God who removes guilt and pardons sin for the remnant of his inheritance, who does not persist in anger forever, but delights rather in clemency. And will again have compassion on us, treading underfoot our guilt, who will cast into the depths of the sea all our sins. The second reading for today is taken from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using the world as so not using it fully, for the wor world in its present form is passing away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. God has overlooked the time of ignorance, but now he demands that all people everywhere repent. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory be to you, Lord. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repeat, repent, and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. 
Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat, mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil ways, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. These words are taken from the book of Jonah the prophet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen, to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Today we celebrate the last Sunday in the season of Epiphany. The liturgical color for this season is green, which represents hope. We have traveled these past months, beginning with the season of Advent, then Christmas, and leading into the Epiphany. Next Sunday, the church will celebrate the first Sunday of pre-Lent, which we know is Septuagesma Sunday. From the color purple of Advent, denoting longing and expectation, to the color white of Christmas, fulfilling that longing with the birth of the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, to the color green of Epiphany. The liturgical color for pre-Lent is rose color or purple, which denotes a more somber change of attitude. We see this in today's writings, we see this in today's story of Jonah, who is called by God to deliver a message of repentance to the city of Nivea. His message, as God proclaimed him to announce, 40 days more and Nivea shall be destroyed. We read in scripture that Nivea was so large of a city that it took three days to walk through. But Jonah began his call to repentance as led by the Spirit of God on that first day. As the story goes, the people believed God. They called a fast and they wore sackcloths both great and small, which was a symbol of their repentance. In the end, God spared the city of Nivea. You know, I believe that the story is so relevant to what is happening in our great nation at this time. The events leading up to and following the election of our 46th president, Joseph R. Biden, should speak to all Americans. We see the ongoing battle in the House of Representatives, as well as the Senate. And I think if the Lord was to send a prophet like Jonah, he would bear the same message. Repent or face destruction. 
When people who are our elected leaders choose to turn away from truth for their own political aspirations and futures, there is a need for repentance. When the events of January 6th, with the storming and the siege of the capital of the United States, is viewed with all its violence and hatred and anger, there is a need for repentance. Do you think that we as a nation are impervious to the decline and destruction? Look at the great ancient civilizations of Babylon and Rome. Were they impervious to decline and destruction? Or think of, in more modern time, the National, National Socialist Party, the Nazis, or the imperial power of Japan during World War II. Were they impervious to decline and destruction? My dear brothers and sisters, when our great nation, even our great nation, can tear itself apart if its people lose its moral, moral fiber and compass, when it loses compassion and empathy of working together and helping others and seek only their own way of thinking, where do we as a country, a nation stand? Are we so blind and ignorant to not see what is happening and what will happen? if we continue on the same road. Let us remember the words of Mahatma Gandhi, who tried to mend a broken India, not only from the colonial British, but the aftermath of all the violence perpetrated by Hindus against Muslims and Muslims against Hindus. Did he not say, an eye for an eye, makes the whole world blind. I truly believe in the words found in the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag, that there is one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I believe that we, as the greatest nation on earth, need but to trust not only in our own selfishness, and our own egos, but rather turn to God for his blessings. In today's gradual, we read from the words of the prophet Micah, who he himself was sent by God with a message of repentance. He said, who is there like you? The God who removes guilt and pardon sin for the remnant of his inheritance. Who does not persist in anger alone, but rather delights in clemency, and will again have compassion on us, treading underfoot our own guilt? You will cast into the depths of the sea all our sins. My dear brothers and sisters, maybe those who believe there is no God and are left to their own destruction, when we believe that we do not need the blessings of our great nation, but rather have our future built upon selfish egos, pettiness, and violence, then I believe that we all need to take a step back examine what lies within our conscience and realize that there is writing on the wall to restoration of those attributes that will make our nation great or it will lead to the destruction of our own democracy that our founding fathers lived by, believed in, and died for. Even in today's gospel, Jesus reminds us that life will not continue on forever and ever. 
but there are stages in life. May we all take heed with the words spoken by Paul in today's reading in his letter to the Corinthians. May we take it to heart. Paul says, I tell you, my brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using the world as not using it fully, for the world in its present form is passing away. May we be a part of using the world in all its positive power bring to us again one nation under God. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Seek good and not evil, that you may live then truly the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you as you claim.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and for the good of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Lord our God, look upon these gifts, our offering, and welcome us into your presence that we might be transformed to do the works that please you. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The whole Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. For today, we celebrate the triune revelation. He was revealed to the Magi from the East, while yet a child, and he was worshipped. He was revealed to all people at his baptism in the Jordan. You, Father, and the Holy Spirit give witness to his divinity. He revealed himself to his apostles in Cana of Galilee, making manifest the power of God through his miracles. And so therefore on this day, we join with the voices of the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Most merciful Father, we humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord, in our prayers today, let us remember the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. For all victims of the coronavirus who are suffering in hospitals this day, and for all their families, let us remember and give God thanks and pray for all the doctors, nurses, first responders, and health care workers who strive daily to save others. Let us remember in prayer all abused and neglected children in our world and all abused and neglected animals in our world, that through God's mercy that he would cause those who perpetrate such crimes to be lifted up into a higher holiness. Let us also remember all those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad, for all victims of violence, both here and abroad, and for all whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God, we join in communion with and honor, above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless numbers of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example.
making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, O Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the most precious body and blood of your Son, beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that sole moment, so grave for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, God, his heavenly Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we, who receive the most sacred body and blood, of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant we pray a place of refreshment light and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen by whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, in the unity 
with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. let us pray. Instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. may the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look upon our sins but upon the faith of your church and grant it the peace and unity according to your holy will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world by your holy body and blood. Free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in all of us living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will, and may it last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this, who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. And now, let us offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. 
Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. May your body, O Lord, which I have received, and your blood, which I have drawn, cling to my innermost being, and grant that no sin remain in me. And who these holy sacraments have nourished, who lives and reigns with God the Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. do you hold his priceless kindness, forbearance, and patience in low esteem, unaware that the kindness of God would lead you to repentance? The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord our God. You have given us life through the body and blood of your Son, strengthen us with the assurance of your love that we may live for you here and with you hereafter. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Go, the sacrifice is offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for myself and for all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Almighty, and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being. And apart from him, nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found life. Life with the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and... Through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. 
to his own, he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Dear brothers and sisters, I welcome you to church as we offer the holy sacrifice of the Mass and to give God thanks, praise, and our prayers. May the good Lord watch upon all of us, upon all our loved ones, and we will conclude this morning's service with the offering of prayer for our great nation, for our leaders for its people, and for our own personal intentions. May God be with all of us until we come again before God our Heavenly Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed. Eternal rest, grant unto their souls, O Lord. May perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 